Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working again on Natalie, our Ruby compiler, and uh, always have a lot of fun working on this. And today I'm gonna be implementing a defer class, uh, similar to Go's defer, but just not as <laughs> syntactically um, concise. It's gonna be a little bit more verbose, but that's okay. Uh, it essentially will run the code that you give it, but at the end of the scope uh, in reverse order. And even if there's an exception in the code, and that's gonna be really important because I want to use it to fix a mistake I made. Uh, I have this nat run block and possibly break with cleanup. And I wrote that uh, for one place in our code, our file, open method uh, when you call file open in Ruby. You pass a block inside of the block when uh, you're done doing the work and the block uh, exits, then we wanna close the file. Uh, but I did not consider exceptions. If there's an exception in the block, then this code will not run. So a defer mechanism of some sort would be really, really nice. Uh, let's first prove that this doesn't work. Let's write a failing test for that. Test Natalie file test. And we're in the open uh, method here. So we'll just make a new block. We'll say it closes the file when the uh, block has an exception. Uh, and we'll copy this, y'all. And then inside of a begin rescue, because we don't want the error to bubble up and break our test, uh, we'll do a file open path, right, do, uh, yeah, do f, um, F dot puts hello world raise some error and then I need a way to capture this uh, unfortunately the open doesn't return so I can't say file equals like this so I think I'll just have to do file equals nil file equals F because this is the file passed in here to the block it's a little bit janky but, but it'll work and uh, file dot closed should equal true and we'll run this through Ruby first. Uh, file test. It passes with flying colors, of course. Uh, we'll run make bin and we'll run the same test there. And uh, yeah, we'll see. See what it says. Well, okay, here we have a failing test. This is perfect. We have proven my theory false should be equal to true. Um, this should be closed. This file should be closed. So. Let's go fix it. Let's go fix it. Uh, first, we need a defer. So uh, include tm defer.header HPP. Uh, what, what do I do? I think I do name, I'll, still, I'll first do pragma once, and then we'll do namespace, Natalie, nope, namespace, tm. I think that's what I did, tm um, vector. Uh, yeah, name says TM, and then we'll do a class defer. Uh, it's gonna be a template, template type name. We're gonna pass a function uh, in as, as the callback. And I have to say, I was uh, heavily inspired to do this by Serenity, the operating system Serenity. Uh, and Andreas Kling has a class called Scope Guard that I am shamelessly borrowing. Uh, there is plenty of other defer C++ code out there in the world. There's plenty of prior art for this. Um, I just wanted to write it myself. I think it's more fun. But I guess we'll pass in the function here. We'll call this a callback. Callback? Yeah, that's fine, I think. Uh, we do need a place to put it, of course. So I'll make this public, make this private. My indentation is all messed up. Um, we'll say fm callback like so. And we'll say m callback callback. And great. And then the magic part of this is we want a destructor. So in this uh, 
when this class goes out of scope, we want it to be destroyed, and then we're going to run the callback like so, and hopefully I did that right. The indentation got all fixed. Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple, I think, unless I missed something, but let's just see if it works. We'll go over to uh, file value header, and we'll use it here. Uh, let's see, so tm defer, put you in the right order, uh, and then right inside of here where we're saying if block do this code, I think this is where we want to um, create a uh, close file defer and we want to give it a lambda uh, and then this inherits from IO value header. So let's go, uh, yeah, M file no. Uh, should I pass? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's pass in the whole thing. Let's pass in obj. Yes. And let's do obj close. I think I have to say as file. Is that what I'm missing? Is that what I'm missing? What am I missing here? What am I missing? Uh, object, that's the file. Hmm, hmm, as file close. I mean, I'm doing it right here. Uh, I didn't pass in the environment. Oh, I do need to capture that as well. Uh, okay, you didn't like that either. <laughs> Okay, I'm a little confused. Obj as file close. That's uh, puzzles me a little bit. Why can't I just capture these two items? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure why I need to do that. I like to be explicit. Um, I don't know. It just feels good. But yeah, that's a little puzzling. Let's see if that uh, works, and let's get rid of this cleanup so we don't we don't mistakenly run that. Man, I'm still bummed by that. That lambda. I couldn't put the capture in there. Why not? Hmm, okay. Well, let's, uh, let's run it again and see if the tests pass. So the idea is that I've created this object on the stack and then when this um, if goes out of scope, uh, then it should be destroyed. And it is. The tests are passing, final test. Um, well, that wasn't too bad. I am, again, really just puzzled why I can't say obj here uh, and env. Why can't I? Why can't I do that? Because this is a value star, yes? Oh, it's a value putter. Okay, yeah. Fun. Obj, file value star equals file obj is obj um, as file. Just curious, file obj, does that work? No, doesn't work either. Oh, I did this wrong. Reference to non-static member function must be called. Oh, right. So that fixes it as well. I can't capture. I can't capture my my smart pointer. Why? Okay, I'm putting it back. I'm putting it back. I'm happy with this code. I guess it's fine. It's a little. I, I obviously there's something here I don't understand. Um, my smart pointer, which is a value putter, 
cannot be captured in this lambda. Don't know why. If you know why, let me know in the comments. I, I obviously I'm always learning. Um, pretty new to C++, so I've, there's a lot to learn there. Uh, but I did just want to look at this again. I mean, look how simple that is. That's so cool. Um, I mean, you could obviously, you know, make this more Go-like. Uh, if you used a macro, you could do something more like this. Um, but Andreas said uh, in his stream I watched uh, yesterday, he that it makes sense for this not to be hidden from. Like we want to know exactly what's happening. Uh, we're creating a temporary object and we're passing a lambda into it, and it goes out of scope and it runs the lambda. So I think that's a little bit clearer. Anyway, all that I think that uh, we can get rid of uh, this one. We can get rid of this with cleanup because we don't use it anywhere else uh i can get rid of that um and then that means that this cleanup code can also go away bam 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 uh and then this doesn't need to be there and this doesn't need to be there okay well, i'm gonna run the whole test suite and we'll come back, and if everything passes, then awesome. I feel really good about that. Uh, really short video, um, not a lot to it, I guess, uh, but it feels good. It feels good to fix bugs and um, use a new, newly learned technique for me. Uh, this is just such an elegant solution. I think it's so cool, and it's using uh, just the semantics of the language itself uh, to make something we want and something we need. And this is just awesome. Just awesome. Yay! Test suite is passing. That's always a good feeling. Let's commit all this. Commit uh, defer. Make sure I didn't leave any test weird test code or printfs or anything in here. I like to check through. Uh, so let's add tm uh, defer class and fix bug in file uh, dot open. Um, the file was not being closed uh, when there was an exception raised uh, raised in the block. Also, this lets us get rid of the very weird nat run block and possibly like with cleanup macro yay uh that's so cool that's so cool so uh i guess that's it for this video uh i did want to mention that we hit 2000 commits on natalie which to me is mind-blowing uh, a lot of contributors lately a uh, lot of pull requests we are we've closed 68 pull requests a lot of those in the last uh, week or two uh yeah so momentum seems to be picking up and uh, now's a great time for you to jump in and contribute if you are interested i have a video on my channel a uh, couple videos back uh called innumerable ruby's innumerable methods or something like that and it will tell you how to contribute if you want to write some ruby uh or if you want to write some c you saw how we did that in this video but my goal is to get this up to 20 contributors by the end of 2021 and I would love for you to be the 13th or 14th or whatever you, whatever number you want to be. Uh, but if you would be in that 20, I would appreciate it because I know that's sort of an artificial milestone. But uh, I don't know. It just feels like we're a real project if we have 20 contributors. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, anyway, thanks for hanging out today. I hope you learned something. I hope that... Uh, you can tell me why that capture in the Lambda didn't quite work like I thought it would. Um, yeah, that I'm probably gonna be Googling that, but you might save me some, some trouble if you know the answer. You can just comment below and please like the video. I never asked for that, but like the video if, if you do and if you did enjoy it. And I will see you in a later video. Bye.